James Bond's favorite car maker is gearing up for a $6 billion IPO. Now, Aston Martin's long road to its market debut has been far from smooth. It was founded by Robert Manford and Lionel Martin in 1914 and passed through numerous owners, including Ford Motors. Most recently, though, it was bought out by an international consortium in, in 2007. Now, the company has flown the flag for the British car industry for more than a century now. It is, of course, famous for being James Bond's car of choice. Here you see Daniel Craig Bond putting the car through its paces in Quantum of Souls. Now, it's perhaps fitting that the company has gone bankrupt 007 times in history. That is a quirk. There we go. Not a coincidence. But now that it's back on firmer footing, it seems to be taking inspiration from Italian rival Ferrari. Shares in that company are up 160% since its new uh, New York IPO back in 2016. Anna Stewart is live in London. She has been speaking with Aston Martin CEO, and he's quite optimistic about not just the company's legacy, but going forward. He says that this could be a popular IPO. I'm curious, though, Anna, you know, we've got Brexit, we've got auto tariffs. He's not even a little bit worried. Not really. He was very bullish. He's really determined. This will follow on the footsteps of Ferrari, which, of course, as he said, IPO'd a couple of years ago, three years ago, and has since over doubled its valuation. But the market is kind of different now, and the headwinds are huge. So much Brexit uncertainty, and the risk still lingers that President Trump could impose tariffs on European car makers. So I asked him, why IPO now? Uh, what's in it for you? What about all these headwinds? From a management point of view, the management view is is based upon our history. Um, our history is, is we have a 105-year-old brand. Um, we've made beautiful cars in the past, but we've not always been successful on a balance sheet basis. And you've had a tendency over the years to have millionaires and billionaires buy into the company, build their car, and walk away. And in consequence, um, the, the company has suffered. In rebuilding the company, which I, I hope me and my team have been able to do since 2015, in bringing it back to profitability, in creating the cadence of product, uh, seven cars over seven years, one car every year, each car having a seven-year life, copy, repeat, copy, repeat, copy, repeat. In doing that, we've been able to create this tempo in the company, and it's this tempo that's making the, the, the company profitable. Now, what I hope in leaving a legacy is that I leave behind stability and importantly governance and what listing does it forces you to have independent chairman independent non-executive directors a governance around the company which will allow that tempo to continue and the reason that we call the plan the second century plan it's about taking all of the learnings from the first century improving them into the second century and making sure that we have uh, the last British really British car company which is capable of surviving for the next 100 years You've turned the company around, but it has been bankrupt several times before. Will investors really want to buy into this company? Um, by the way, you know, a turnaround isn't one, isn't one gentleman, it's a team. And the, the team that we've created um, is very much a, a meritocracy the, where we work together. And I think that's what investors are buying. They're buying this team, this team that has demonstrated that this, this company you can liken to uh, Ferrari. And of course, Ferrari has been very successful. Um, so if you want a benchmark, it's, it's there. Uh, you see the multiple that they've managed to, to generate against their EBITDA. Obviously, our EBITDA is a little bit behind them. but with the same type of company and in fact over time as we add new models and we've replaced models the pricing is accretive that means the margin is accretive and we trend towards the the Ferrari margins over time and of course we go from today's roughly speaking 7,000 cars a year to uh, a volume in 2022 of 14,000 cars a year so you've got this wonderful luxury growth model which of course is very attractive to investors now, this IPO will take place amongst some pretty strong headwinds, Brexit uncertainty on the one hand, and still risks lingering over potential tariffs from the US with President Donald Trump, uh, waging tariffs potentially on European cars. Is this the right time to IPO? Well, I'd say it's, it's therefore the, the risks that you outlined, which are risks to the general economy, um, I'd say that Aston is, is the counter of that. In many cases, it's sheltered from those risks. So if you're looking for a kind of safe haven for your investment, then you choose 
luxury companies like Aston Martin. Luxury companies tend to survive through disturbance and turbulence better than anybody else, mainly because our buyers are, are less affected by those macroeconomics. Now, if you take Brexit, for example, um, we export 25% of our cars to the EU and we sell 30% of our cars in the UK. Let's assume that there's a, there's a hard Brexit. Let's assume that the EU puts a 10% tariff. Yeah, and that would make our cars that go to uh, Europe a little bit more expensive, and you might argue we might lose a little bit of market share. On the other hand, coming in the other direction, Ferraris and Lamborghinis are also now 10% more expensive, and that means that we're more competitive in our, in our own market, where we sell a slightly higher um, percentage of, of our of our cars therefore in that instance it's a little bit positive on top of that of course one assumes that if you have a hard brexit that the pound is going to go soft that it will weaken uh, and when uh, when the pound weakens that's good for us as an exporter so improves our profitability so you see in the case of brexit it's not something that keeps me awake at night it's not something that I you know a hard brexit with tariffs is not something that I would advocate but it's certainly not something that worries me Andy Palmer, the CEO there, Paula, he did put a very positive spin on Brexit, but I would say later in the discussion, he did say he was prepared for a hard Brexit, for a no-deal Brexit. Uh, although all their cars are made here in the UK, most of the components are imported in. In fact, most of them from Europe and Germany in particular. And as a result, they operate in just-in-time production, much like all the car makers uh, around Europe and many in Asia, of course, uh, which means components arrive just in time for them to be fitted into the car. They now have a process whereby they keep components for five days in a warehouse because they are ready for potential custom delays, and he said they could even increase that. Yeah, and that is going to be a problem, you know, that just in time, obviously p pioneered really in the auto industry in North America. It is so important, interesting, even to a luxury car maker. I know you're saying you put a positive spin on Brexit. Did he also put a positive spin on Asia growth? Because obviously, if you have to look at the valuation of this company going forward, Asia's got to be part of the equation. Asia is actually where they're really planning to double down in terms of sales coming up. They, they have a vast increase in sales plan for the next few years, particularly when their new uh, facility in Wales comes online, and Asia is certainly the biggest target for them. In the United States, they're still planning to can continue their growth there, and they said that, yeah, with any tariffs that may come their way, they will simply pass on that cost to the consumer. Paula? And I didn't ask you, I should have before, did you get a spin in a car? <laughs> did you get a spin? <laughs> Paula, they were just on pictures, on screens, oh, I didn't get a spin on anything. But I can tell you, at least I've already broken the sad news to you, but to all our viewers out there, the, uh, the ticker symbol will not be 007. I'm oh, sorry shame. to say, the CEO himself told me it wouldn't be. It's more likely to be AML, which I think is a huge disappointment. Maybe they could have come up with some other James Bond acronym, but I'll leave it there. Maybe they'll get creative. Anna, thanks so much for bringing us the story. Appreciate it. Now